Today, guys, I'm going to be showing you exactly how you can make Roblox thumbnails without Blender. This is super, super simple, and these are probably the best thumbnails that I have ever created without Blender and with Blender. So without further ado, let's get right into this video. All right, guys, so to make thumbnails without Blender, we're going to be using, we're going to be using AI, and you might be a little skeptical about this, but you can get some really, really good results. And this thumbnail that you're seeing on screen right now was like 50% generated with AI. So the first thing that you guys are going to want to do is look up bing.com slash create or go to my website link in the description. I'd recommend going to my website link linked below because it has a lot of information that's going to help you learn how to make good thumbnails that kind of draw people to them. This video is just showing you how to use the tools and how to put everything together to create a thumbnail. So once you guys are on Bing, Microsoft Bing, you're going to probably have to sign up and create an account, but I'm already in. So what you're going to do is type in mail and for each description, put a comma in between. So I'm going to say mail looking to the right shock, happy, vibrant, or I'm not going to put vibrant. I'm just going to put white background. That is one of the key things. Make sure you put white background so that we can remove the background easily and use the character in our thumbnail. And usually I have them looking in a certain direction so that they're looking at the text or whatever's on screen that's supposed to be exciting or sad or whatever you're trying to get your viewer to feel so that they'll click their thumbnail. So you have around 15 of these coins a day. So in reality, you don't really need 15. You can keep creating. Sometimes Im images don't come out perfect, so you have to generate a few times, but you should only really need 15 a day and, you, and you, they really charge every day. If you really need to, you could just create more accounts and get 15 a day on each of those. But I'm going to click create real quick and we're going to see what images we get. Oh, I forgot to mention the most important part. Make sure you type in Roblox style at the end or it's going to generate real pictures. I completely forgot about that. Make sure you put Roblox style in the end. All right, guys. And now here are a couple of images. Now, if we're being completely honest, all of these images will not work because their body is cut off. So you're going to want to make sure you put in full body into your prompt. So I'm going to do that real quick. So really perfecting the prompt is going to be the hardest part about doing this, but the hardest part really is just super easy. This doesn't take that much time at all. It only took me around one or two generations to make sure that I had it right. And since you guys have already watched this video, you're going to know exactly what you need to put in depending on what you're looking for. So you could just do female looking to the right shocked, and then you can describe what they're wearing and everything like that. If that's something that you want to do. So this one right here, now the hands aren't perfect. You're going to have to generate a few times to get, you know, stuff that looks pretty much perfect. I would say this could be okay. This one's not going to really work because it's going to be cut off right there. This actually may work. You know, it's a little bit weird with the arms, but we're going to just use this anyways, and I'll show you exactly how to do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this image and we're going to put it into remove.bg, which is a website that removes the background. So you don't necessarily have to download this unless this icon is like over them for some reason. So you can just copy this, go to remove.bg, and then you can just paste your image in here. And there we go. Now we have our confused, happy, whatever uh, Roblox character that's looking in a certain direction. Now, again, your creativity is really going to decide how the thumbnail looks, you know, what your thumbnail's about, if it's gameplay, you know, whatever your video is about, it's really going to have to be decided on your creativity and stuff like that. All right, so this is the first thing we need for the thumbnail, but the next thing we're going to generate is the background. So I'm going to type in forest, vibrant, and then I'll just type in Roblox style because, you know, this doesn't really matter. And you can do whatever background you want. For me, I just like it kind of to pop, you know, be in your eyes, you know, the colorfulness. So these all look really, really nice. In my case, I think I'm going to use this one with the river right here because this one looks really, really cool. And I think it will look nice as a background. So I'm just going to leave both of those. Uh, I'm just going to leave this open right here. And then, of course, this open right here. And what you guys want to do is go to photopia.com, which will also be linked on my website below. It has all the tools and everything. And you guys want to click on new project. And then you're going to put the width in as 1,280 by 720. This is the YouTube thumbnail dimensions. Click create. And now you have our base canvas for our thumbnail. So first thing we're going to do is drag in our background. Again, there's going to be this watermark if you just copy it. But for me, when I paste it in here and I just scale this up to fit it, it usually cuts it off. As you guys can see, it's not there anymore. You can rearrange this however you want. And then I usually go over here, click filter, blur, and then I click on motion blur. And then I drag this up pretty much to max because I don't really want them to see exactly what the background is. I just want some colorfulness and stuff like that. I do actually have some saved that I like to reuse in certain thumbnails like this one right here. All right. So once you have this right here, we're going to go over to our character. We're going to copy him or you can download him, whatever you're feeling. We're going to paste him in here. And now the next thing we're going to do is scale him up. So I'm going to scale him up by grabbing right here. And if that's not working, make sure you click off of this. Make sure you have transform controls selected or you won't be able to move the character too much. So I'm going to place him right here. 
here. And this is just if you want to. I usually like to do this, but I'll go click, right click it, click blending options. And then I'm going to click on bevel and emboss. And it adds this little line around him. And this is my settings for bevel and emboss if you want to copy them exactly. And then I turn on control or I don't, need, okay, I don't even know what this is. I don't know if I'm just stupid, but then this is my range that I have. I have it on 28%. Then I add a stroke to it and I make this around three and I make it black. And then I add a drop shadow and these are my drop shadow settings. If you want to pause the video real quick and copy those. So there we go. That is the start of our thumbnail. We have our character and we have our background. So far looking pretty cool. Now, I don't really know what this thumbnail is for because I'm just randomly creating it for the sake of this video, but I'm going to, I guess, make a, I'll make a thumbnail thumbnail. Okay. So you guys can choose up here your font. So if you click your text right here and you drag it, you should be able to type as you guys can see, there's my text. So I'm going to type in thumbnails. I usually do it in all caps and then I'm going to size it up like this. And I'm not going to try to make anything fit on the thumbnail quite yet. Cause first I want to perfect the font. So select this all by double clicking then click on your font. And I have to load my font in because I have downloaded a custom one, but there are tons and tons of fonts on here that you guys can go ahead and use. Like there are so many, I can't even scroll to the bottom. There are, there are tons of fonts that you can look through, but I'm going to click load font for me. And then I'm going to scroll down and find the font that I use. I'm going to open it up and here we go. Now to make your fonts, now to make your text have its own like special design and color on it, open up your layer style tab, click on bevel emboss this, this. So basically the exact same settings that you have on your character, except you're going to click on gradient overlay. These are my gradient overlay saying settings. And then you're going to go to gradient and then you're going to want to change the gradient color. I'm going to do like red or something or maybe blue. This is just a test thumbnail. So I'm not really, you know, trying to make a thumbnail that's going to really grab people's attention. I'm just trying to make one to show you how you guys will do it. There we go. Those are the two colors. So I usually put the darker one on the bottom and the lighter one on the top because uh, I really just like the way that looks. And there we go. We have our text. Now, in reality, you're going to want pretty big text. So choosing long, lengthy words like thumbnails is going to be hard to do. But in this case, if you're making a thumbnails, you're probably going to want the word thumbnails on it. But, you know, it really is up to you. I'm just going to put this right here. Now, in a lot of cases, I like to put words or images on screen. So if we're making YouTube thumbnails, I'm going to look up YouTube icon and I'm going to just go download one off the internet. Here's one. It's got a transparent background already. And I'm just going to copy that and paste that into here. And as you guys can see, we have a YouTube icon. So we're going to select this and I'm going to put the exact same settings, blending settings that I have on my character onto this thumbnail. Now, this does not look, you know, super, super good because I haven't put this, you know, a ton of time into it. But so far, you know, that's not bad. That looks pretty good. If if this is like a beginner thumbnail, is this your first, if this is your first thumbnail, that's pretty good. And you could get some clicks off of that without a doubt. Now, there are things obviously that can be fixed, like just the kind of arrangement of this thumbnail. But in a lot of cases, I do like to add arrows kind of pointing at, you know, whatever the object is. So that's what I'm going to go do real quick, rotate it. And I'm going to put it behind him. Now, this doesn't really look that good now that I think about it. Like, it doesn't really look that good. But if you put this, drag this layer over, then it could go over it like this and kind of look okay. And if we go into blending options, we can apply the same we have for everything else. Stroke, drop, drop shadow. And if you want to change the color of the arrow, you can just click gradient overlay and create your own gradient for it. So I'm going to make this green, I guess. I don't know if that will look good or not. But in, when it comes down to it, you just got to make something that looks good. This is just for, you know, the purpose of this tutorial. Tutorial. So let me find something a little bit darker, I guess. So yeah, this isn't the best thumbnail, but this is just a basic preview of what you can do with these tools. Honestly, I think this looks really, really good, especially if you're just starting at YouTube and you're in, this is the thumbnail you made right here. That's really, really good. Now the ones that I make, I put a lot of time into making sure that they kind of look organized. So this is how you guys can make thumbnails for completely free with AI and Photopea. You don't even have to really download anything. You can pretty much just copy and paste it and put it all in here. And it looks really, really good. If this video helped you guys at all, showed you anything new, taught you anything, new please make sure to leave a like and subscribe it helps the channel out a lot we're getting close to 20,000 subscribers and that'd be pretty cool if you guys did subscribe anyways i will see you guys in the next one